I'm Chris Ashmore and welcome to Donegal TV and this special programme dedicated to Jim McGuinness, the All-Ireland Championship winning manager. Appropriately, we're here in McCool Park, the home of Gaelic Games in Donegal. And I'm delighted to be joined by the chairman of the Donegal County Board, Sean Dunyon. Sean, it's been a great year for Gaelic Games in Donegal. Just how important has Jim McGuinness been? Jim McGuinness has been one of the catalyst of the success. We all know we had the players that had the potential. Jim put his management team in place. He spoke to the players. He told them what he wanted, and then he brought them forward. They believed in what vision that he had, and uh, they put the effort in. They gave the commitment. They gave everything they had to Donegal over the last number of years, and they've got their success. Uh, in eight or nine short months, we picked up our first Ulster title in 19 years, and then a short 12 months later, we reached the pinnacle and picked up a Sam Maguire uh, back last September. Our thanks to Sean, and we'll go now to Sean Perry, who reflects on what's been a tremendous year for Jim McGuinness and everybody associated with Donegal GAA. On the 23rd of September last, Donegal competed in and won only its second ever All-Ireland Senior Football title. 20 years earlier, a lanky 19-year-old was part of the first Donegal panel, which made history claiming the Sam Maguire. The teenager was from Glenties. His name, Jim McGuinness. As fate would have it, he wouldn't win another championship medal in Donegal colours as a player. However, as a key member of other successful teams, there was deserved recognition. Two Railway Cups, three Sigerson medals, a call-up to the Ireland International Rules squad, a club championship with his beloved Niamh Connell, and as manager, an Ulster Under-21 success. However, his finest moment lay ahead. Having taken over the Donegal senior football manager's job in 2010, he transformed a squad low on morale into a team of All-Ireland winners last September. I read a book one time, Scott, coming across the, to the North Pole, and he, he said, hire character and teach them the skills. So obviously if you hire the wrong characters there, and they mess up, everybody's dead. And uh, it wasn't necessarily about how good you were, it's about, you know, the person. And when you've got people like that, we have a very good group of players. No problems with them, and they're very, very focused, and they're very good lads. And everywhere we go, the hotel people here, the hotel people in the Abbey, where we stay, they all say the same thing. Very good lads, they're very mannerly lads. For that reason, it's enjoyable working with them. My memories of Jim would be, he was always very active. Um, he was always involved in a sport from a very young age. In our house, it was a sporty house. The boys were always involved um, in sports or football. He was always in bed at nine o'clock on a Saturday night, ready for a match or a game the next day. I seen Jim when he was a, when he was a wee boy in under 12s playing for our Patrick. Long hair on him, long thin legs, and a very slender body. He was like a needle, but he was he had great potential. And I knew that someday, I never thought it would be Jim when we'd get as far as this, but I knew someday Jim was going to hit the high spots, which he did. He came up a minor, senior, on the 21, he played every age for Donegal and his club. He was one of the greatest boys ever come out of the O'Connell club. And when he first played county football, county minor, uh, I used to give him lifts to training and, and the county senior team then when he got onto it. He used to travel back me and forward and not him to training. But uh, I remember him getting man of the match up in Cloners. I don't know if he was against Derry. But he was brilliant that day, I mean, he brought Donegal back from the dead, just, you know, with a mighty game. That was the first real sign of potential from, you know, at county level. Ah, well, he was the youngest man there in, in the squad in 92. We made pictures of him coming into Glenties, along with him and Michael Gallagher, Brian McEnough. Jim always sees the funny side of things, like, you know, he's very, he's very light-hearted. He comes across like this real serious sort of, I think, um, motivator, but, he, you know, he, he enjoys was sort of the funny side of most things, you know. He was always a real leader, that's how I found him anyway, you know, um, whether it was going down in the car to training or, or be on the pitch in the restrooms, he was a great speaker and like he, he, he's not your typical talk, talk the cliches kind of thing, you know what I mean, he always spoke the truth and he spoke what he meant and, uh, and he meant what he spoke um, and it always came from his heart. 
So you bleed everything he said and you carry it on the pitch then too, you know. And uh, we used a great conversation now going in the car about different things and about different setups and maybe things maybe weren't weren't happy about or whatever, you know. But he 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 always knew what he wanted to get on the football field as a player. And then um, it transpired into, into management. Then after that too, you know. There was one year he was captain of our team, so he was, and uh, like that. That's that's when he really came to the fore. Then you know, speaking uh, speaking to us and, and, and so on, and leading us on the field too. Um, there was one wild bad day we played our man in, in, in a league game down there, and uh, I just I just remember him pinging passes from from midfield that day. And I could still see a pass out of the boot down the right wing, um, playing into the town goals, and you know it was just into the man's chest on and the rain hopping of us, you know, uh, and it, it was kind of. Thing, you just stand, at that time you kind of stood back and admired him, you know, I can only just, because it was, it was unbelievable and, and, and it's something that kind of sticks my mind since, you know. In 2005, we were up playing against Malin, our pitch had been done up I think at the time, and we were up playing in Mount Charles in the first round of the championship. We drew up in Malin, and I remember that day I was chatting to Fonzie Travers, and right behind me at the wire was Jim and Yvonne, leaning over the fence, like, you know, and we were terrible that day. We nearly went out of the championship that day only for Paddy Campbell came soloing up from full back and stuck the ball in the net with a couple of minutes to go and we won we won the game by a point or two. But after that Jim came in. Huey was there, Huey Malloy and John were there and they got, brought Jim in as a trainer and trainer and motivator and he just lifted the whole thing and we went out in the county final in 2005. Mickey Brennan was the GA president at the time. And Charlie O'Donnell introduced him to all the players, you know, at the start of the game. And he came back over to the wall and he says to Charlie, Charlie says that we team the blue will get annihilated, they're only kids, you know. So when Charlie rang him that night, he told him we drew, he couldn't believe it. And then we went out the next day and beat Unions in the final, in the replay. And Jim came on the last few minutes himself. He was injured at the time, after coming back from an injury. But that was our first championship and it was just unbelievable. Like. When we won that 205. You know, we were reminiscing and singing and dancing and on this occasion I thought I'd put a few words together and I went like this. Oh, the blue and white is dynamite tonight. Oh, the blue and white is dynamite tonight. Oh, the blue and white is dynamite. We put St. Unions out of sight. The blue and white is dynamite tonight. First time I suppose came across him as a, as, as a manager. Uh, it would have been in a, under 21s a number of years ago. And I suppose it was the same as I thought it would have been the same as any other under 21 campaign where I would have been, you know, training with the, the senior team and, and maybe uh, a couple of weeks before the under 21 game would start, I would, I would go in and start um, training with the with the under 21s. But um, I suppose Jim put a dampener in that fairly quickly, and uh, as I say, he just he knew he meant meant business straight away, and uh, I was just very very taken with his approach to things, and um, I suppose every every player was at, at that time. Is a, is, a, is a mind where he's just able to, I suppose, um, just grasp your attention straight away. Um, the way he speaks about things, the way he passionately speaks about Donegal football, and the way he passionately speaks about improving you as a player. Um, it makes you just feel a great sense of kind of pride. Um, you get a great sense of confidence about yourself um, whenever he tells you something um, because you have great belief in what he tells you. And um, I suppose that there transferred through that whole under 21 campaign where, um, you know, I suppose we got together fairly early. And it was a fantastic bunch of lads. It's still one of the best bunch of lads you know we um, have ever been part of. Um, it was a great journey. Unfortunately, uh, that day in, in, in Breffney Park, um, you know, on another day could have went for us only for the, the width of a crossbar. And I'll take the I'll take the blame for that. Christmas 2010. Um, Jim had uh, been in the job a number of months, and at that stage, Peter McGinley wasn't able to commit. So we, sort, we were sort of hooked up with a combination of Peter and Martin McHugh, hooked us up together, and we met one day in Letterkenny, and I suppose we, we've been together since. We shared a similar philosophy on uh, on what was important to a team in that you know Jim would say himself, yes, he's the manager, but he's a coach, you know, and what he does best and what he enjoys most is being out on the training pitch, and that goes for myself, trying to improve players and improve our setup every single night, so that when we get to Clonus or we get to Valuable Fair, we get to Cook Park, that 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 we have a game plan and we have players that are at a level that can compete at the you know with the best in Ireland. In our family, club football was always a big thing, and. Um and to sit around with your neighbours and friends and to see them bring in the Sam Maguire. It really was a, a, a great night for us, you know, and an emotional night too.
I've known Jim now for the best part of half a year. We've been very impressed with his, his knowledge of sport, his, his intelligence, his, the way he reads the game and his psychology in sport and particularly working with the development players we feel he has a, a pivotal role at the club in the future. As regards what he's done for Donegal Gaelic, well, I mean, you can't put that into words really. He's revolutionised the, the game, he's revolutionised the, the county with his intensity, his, his love for the game and obviously his uh, tactical approach to the game where he's brought huge success to Donegal in such a short space of time. Fantastic person, first and foremost, to know. Um, it's just enthusiasm for even the, the smallest of things, whether it be football or, or non football, it matters. You know, he, he has a great sense of knowledge nearly in every aspect of life, and it's, it's something that's able to rub off in, in every person. And there's people, I suppose, that have, a, have a, a, a nice aura about them, and I mean, an aura in a good way. And I think Jim McGuinness has that effect on everyone. I mean, you see the effect he has on so many people here in Donegal. To be quite another honest, the, the major sense of pride to be able to think that maybe one of our own people here in Donegal, a man from, from Glentis, what he's done for us in Donegal and what he's been able to provide for us as players, he's been able to provide us and put medals in our pockets and I suppose that's the biggest kind of compliment we can play to pay to the man. He was always dreaming and hoping of, even when he was playing football himself, this is the year, this is what we're going to do it this year, <laughs> you know, he was such a dreamer um, and his dream came true. Just a few hours away, would you find... Discover Ireland.ie forward slash Donegal, right here, right now. When the ambulance rushes somebody in from a car crash, the family come into the emergency department expecting what they see on TV. But this isn't TV, this is real life. And when the team and I have finished the fight to save someone's life, it's the cleaning ladies who scrub the blood off the floor and pick up the pieces. When I declare someone dead, I phone the coroner, I gather myself for a few moments, and then I go to see the family, usually the parents. This is the worst possible news for you. We've done the best for your son, but sadly now he's dead. And you see those people dissolving, their lives dissolving, just falling apart. If you're a young road user in love with life and fun, you don't ever want your mum to meet me doing my job, do you? Colab, turning knowledge into enterprise. Home to your new business idea. Located at Letterkenny Institute of Technology. Create your own future and choose Colab as the home for your innovation and technology business idea. Visit colab.ie. Your business journey begins here. Kelly's Toyota is the main Toyota dealership in County Donegal since 1974. Located in Port Road, Letterkenny and Mount Charles. Providing a variety of services from full service body repairs, NCT and DOE testing, and even car hire. Kelly's Toyota has it all. So if you're in the market for a newer used car, van, or commercial vehicle, give us a call or visit us online at www.kellystoyota.com. Kelly's Toyota, the best built cars in the world. Four Lanterns Restaurant, serving the Northwest since 1971. Home of the legendary Big Four and Snack Box. Assortment of kids' meals. Meal deals of the week. Quality, fresh food at affordable prices. Located in Letterkenny, Buncrana and Donegal Town. Also at the Courtyard Restaurant and Cafe. Follow us on Facebook and visit one of our many locations throughout Donegal. McGee, a family-run business established in 1866. The McGee brand is built around 146 years of real heritage. We are distinctive with our colourful fabrics, inspired by the rich tapestry of the Donegal sea and landscape. 
The McGee collection includes menswear, women's wear and home accessories. Renowned for our tweed, we have worked this traditional fabric into contemporary garments and products. Our home accessories are designed and made in Donegal. Shop online at www.mcgee1866.com. Discover third level education opportunities at Letterkenny Institute of Technology with two campuses in Ireland's northwest, Letterkenny and Kelly Beggs. Our schools provide a wide variety of programmes with awards right up to master's and doctorate level. Visit www.lyit.ie. Sony Center Letterkenny has a large selection of TVs, computers, iPads, cameras, and gadgets to suit any budget. Free nationwide delivery. Located at Six Riverside Retail Park, Letterkenny County, Donegal. Sony, make believe. Welcome back. The Donegal Association in Dublin held its annual gala banquet very recently. Their selection of Donegal Person of the Year was made easy as a result of Donegal's exploits on the Gaelic football fields of Ireland last season. The recipient was of course Jim McGuinness. Here various guests from all walks of life pay tribute to the Donegal manager. There was no big decision to be made this year. It was the easiest decision we've had in, in a good few years, I would say. Um, once, once we won Sam in September, uh, then I think there could be only one uh, winner. And it wasn't just because we won Sam, I suppose. You know, it was the way we did it. You'll see with a man like Jim McGuinness uh, that, that uh, he's an indication of that you know, talent is really in creativity. And, and the ability of people to, to, to be themselves. Uh, you can get off, even people who get off to a, uh, you know, not to an advantage start, can actually very quickly pick up uh, and do that. To hear Jim McGuinness speak, he has such conviction himself, and to talk about how he, for want of a better word, encourages and leads his team, are instinctive within him, because you know he absolutely believes in himself and the way he's doing things and how his players have responded is now on the record. The All Ireland we won in 92 was one for the older people, the older people, because people were saying, well, are they happy now that Donegal won in All Ireland? I think this, this All Ireland was one for the younger people. What Jim McGuinness has done for Donegal this year is unbelievable because he has really, he has raised the spirits of the county. Times are tough at the moment and um, people got such a lift when they got the Sam Maguire. Uh, I went up to Donegal, I was at the match and then I went up to Donegal afterwards when the team were being welcomed home and you could just feel a buzz right around the country, it was marvellous. In all fairness there was, it would have been a major shock if it was anybody else this year really, considering what he, what he and the lads have achieved in less than two years, it's astonishing really. Understandably, Jim McGuinness was proud to have been named as the 37th recipient of the Donegal Person of the Year Award. He took time out at the function in the Regency Hotel in Dublin to speak exclusively to Donegal TV. I began by asking him what the honour meant to him on a personal level. It's supposed to be a part of it and to be a part of uh, something that you're honoured by your own people is very, very special, definitely. In terms of, you know, you've spoken about journalists asking you about the two in a row, but uh, you know, retaining the All-Ireland, it's a difficult business, the hunger was there last year. Trying to reinvent all of that this year, it's a serious challenge. Well, not really. Like, I mean, I suppose it's a, it's a nice challenge to have, really, for us. We want to try and move forward and we want to try and develop as best we can uh, in the coming weeks and months. That's our goal, really. Um, we don't feel we're the finished article by any matter of means and we're just trying to, I suppose, look at some areas where we feel we can strengthen on and also introduce new areas and hopefully, you know, we can bring the lads up to a level that they can be very, very competitive at Championship Football and at that stage, really, you know, Tyrone in the first round of the Championship is going to be very difficult for us so it's just about trying to get them up to a level where we can put in a very good performance on the 26th of May. I suppose there have been developments since that famous day in the uh, end of September, your own uh, development and your own progress towards Glasgow Celtic in a professional setup. How did all of that come about? How did it uh, manifest itself in the background? Well, I suppose you'll have to ask Celtic that, but I suppose um, the bottom line would really would have been that I would probably would have done my me, me interview via the Donegal job and I suppose Dermot Desmond, the owner of Celtic, and would have been picking up in terms of what we were doing and what we were going on and relaying it to 
Neil Lennon and then I was invited over for the Champions League match and uh, had a good conversation with Neil at that stage and uh, with no real sort of uh, agenda to it, just a good conversation then invited back over after the Cork match when we were in the All-Ireland final and then it just kind of took off from there really. And there's been golf and Ryder Cup and such like since, I mean how, there, there seems to be no job with which you're not associated. Well I don't know about that, there was uh, plenty of jobs mentioned that I wasn't associated with I can assure you but no it's, it's, it's very flattering I suppose but the bottom line is you know it's on the back of the Donegal success and your, your focus is on that and your focus is trying to move things forward and, and, um, and individually look at the players within your squad and see is there more in them on an individual level, Strength, widen that out and, and to, the, to the overall squad and then try and strengthen what you've got and move forward and that's what we've been doing for the last two years and hopefully in the next number of weeks and months myself, Rory and the management team can continue to do that. But in terms of juggling all the responsibilities that you have, it must be a seismic challenge on a weekly basis. Well it probably is, but it's no different to the last four years, to be honest with you. Uh, it's been the, it's the same story really, you know, you're trying to anybody that's involved in inter-county football, you know, that's the challenges that are facing them. You know, there's there's 33 players you're dealing with and you're trying to manage that and you're trying to manage injuries and you're trying to manage people's form and you're trying to develop strength and you're trying to work on tactics and you have to get the logistics sorted out and the video analysis sorted out and the nutrition sorted out so all them balls are in the air all the time anyway and I think the more you do it the, you know the easier it becomes in many respects and um, when, you know year one was very very manic and very hectic in terms of that and you're just trying to get a grip on it and get a grip on what the job entails and then your second year then is um, you know you can consolidate and use the information from the previous year and now we've done that again so we would probably be running off the same script to 60-65% now and then there's some other new things coming in and that's kind of the the nature of it at the minute but so it's it's not as overwhelming as it would have been in 2011 say. You're obviously very much your own man and you alluded to people that you look up to and influenced you and who you respect like Columba McDyer and your other confidants that you chose not to name but I mean in terms of you know how you go about your work and you know, the people that influence you along the way and obviously you're in the eye of the media spotlight a lot the national pundits decided to have a go at Donegal last year. Do you engage with them regularly, or if so, what's no, been said since then? <laughs> Pat Spillane. I don't engage with the, with the with the national media that much, other than you know we do our duties with the with the press nights and everything else, and we try to be uh, as open and upfront with them as possible. But um, I mean, everybody's got their own sort of uh, framework to work from, and I suppose the media and the people in the media, their job is to, to get stories in the media, and we became the story for a period of time. That's not relevant to us, really. Our job is coaching. It's a different thing altogether, and we can't influence what people say about the team, and nor do we want to. But you defend the team, and if the team is disrespected and dishonoured, as Ryan Bradley was back in 2011, in 2011 you, you took a fairly robust stand and decided to defend his honour. But that's a different thing. It's a different people having an opinion on how you play. Uh, it's an opinion. But it's a different thing when you're disrespected. Then it's a, a situation where you've got somebody who's very committed, working extremely hard, putting their life on hold for football, and then people are, you know, taking uh, a swipe or, or knocking them and or, or, or disrespecting them or putting them down. And that's not, um, that's not, I suppose, what we're about. Our whole ethos is built on a very strong bond between the players and the management, and, our, and that's based on respect and trust and loyalty and um, you know if something gets in the way of that obviously as manager you have to defend your players. You talked about encouraging your players in the course of your address to the crowd here tonight and hoping that some of your messages about telling them they'd done well would seep in. I suppose it's, it's a message that carries to all walks of life and all professions and something you, you've been asked to do in a lot wider fora than, than GA. Without a doubt, and I suppose one of the things I've spoke about tonight is being the best that you can be, and that can go into any area of your own life, personal life, or sporting life, professional life, it doesn't matter. If you're trying to be the best that you can be, then you're driving that process forward. And um, that can be anything, and once you lock on to that, then that can take you in any direction. And for us, we just try, want to try and be the best we can be as a group of players. Um, you know, we, ha we have certain players in our squad where have we taken them, where can we take them in the future, where can we take them on an individual le level in the future that will strengthen the group and uh, that process is something that you can never know at the outset where you're going to end up 
but as long as everybody's working hard and uh, tuned into it, then the one guarantee, in my opinion anyway, is that you will improve. I think if everybody switched on to trying to be the best that they can be, they definitely will improve. And uh, I think, um, you know, it's a, it's a very simple philosophy, but I think it's got a, a lot of credence and a lot of strength to it. Are there ever aspects of the job that annoy you? Oh, there's a lot of aspects of the job that annoy me, you know, but uh, but it's part and parcel of it, you know. You, you put up with that um, in the hope that, you know, you can be successful and that you can bring... Uh, an experience to the, the players that you're working with lives that makes it worthwhile for them to engage in training Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday and gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday and that's the reality of an inter-county footballer at the minute everybody is uh, working when they're not with the group they're working on their own and when they are with the group they're working hard and that process is nearly nine months of the year now so it's a big big commitment and when that commitment level is there to the extent that it is currently, then you just hope that you can get a bit of success for the players that are involved in that. And thankfully, we've had that success now. We've we've won four competitions in, in, in two years. Success has been attained with you, I suppose, halfway through your term of four years as Donegal boss. Year three is now underway. I mean, it's impossible to look too far into the future, but what do your medium to long-term ambitions as a, as a football coach entail? My short term and my medium and my long term ambition is the 26th of May and it won't be anything past that. That's the biggest game that we've faced this year. Uh, it's probably going it, to, it's a, it's a defining moment really, you know, it's the, it's the summer in one game really and if you can get through that game everything could open up for you again but uh, for us um, our full focus is on that. Your family are here with you tonight and you have two young sons and a young daughter. How do they feel about their dad being the Donegal manager? Are they old enough to even understand? <laughs> Not really, no. Uh, I don't think so. Anyway, the, the, Tony Marie would have an idea, you know, but um, I don't think that the other two men have much of a much of a clue what's going on. But there's a there's a great purity in that as well, and uh, it's been it's been a great, you know, I suppose having them around to experience it with them, you know, and um, I suppose when you're leaving the house, you know, so many nights in the week to try and go out to train and and uh, and trying to move the boys on you hope that you're doing that for all the right reasons and you're leaving them behind but you're hoping you're doing it maybe to be a good role model for them in the future yourself or to do something with your life that can impact on them maybe down the track so um, from that point of view it's been very positive 2012. It's the year of the gathering and I know that you've uh, been assigned the role of one of a number of ambassadors for Donegal along with the likes of Shay Given, Packy Bonner, Daniel O'Donnell and Sean McGinley who we've spoken to earlier uh, you know, GA obviously has played a pivotal role in all of that in terms of people coming home to watch Donegal. Absolutely, and the amount of people that had come home last summer was staggering really from the Ulster final onwards. And uh, I suppose if it is the year of the gathering 2013, we hope that you know as many of them can make the journey home uh, for the first round and the preceding rounds if we can get through uh, in this year's championship. And uh, I think it's special as well to come from a different country back and see your team play, and particularly if they're winning, and uh, we're hoping that that'll be the case. Well, that's all we've time for in this week's show. I hope you've enjoyed this special tribute to Jim McGuinness. I'm in beautiful Bundoran, which we'll be featuring in next week's programme with Andrea Gilligan. Also in next week's show, we'll have an exclusive feature with Noel Maloney, a US Homeland Security officer whose mother hails from Milford former joint Donegal Person of the Year and long-distance swimmer Anne-Marie Ward and actor Sean McGinley, who looks at his native Ballyshannon and its surrounding area. Thank you for watching. Slán agus Bannat.